Hello everyone, I'm Leo Ding, one of the founders of Racket Motion Studio. We produce creative stories with animation. With an online course, you can make similar shorts like this. Welcome to my motion graphic. I don't know why you think that you could help me when you couldn't get by by yourself. After we have animated all the other features, we proceed to a more exciting step. We animate our character. I select all. Uh, I lock the C ground layer. I select all of our characters' layers. Right click, just be calmed. Here I will name main character. So now you can see it like this. Here we have a lot of features to animate. Like we have a falling head. We also animate the head and the fishing rod. We also animate the hand. The fishing pole will be parented to the hand. It means that when the hand moves, the rod also moves along. The same with the head. And all of this I will parent to a null so that I can move everything easily. What we have to do first is to separate all these. We need to convert everything to shape layers. For example, the fishing pole, I right clicked and choose grip shape from vector layer. It's the same with the head, or it might not be necessary, but we'll still do it so that we can give it some interesting motions. For the boat with the white stripe, I will turn it to shape layer. Similarly, after converting, I delete the old ones. We rearrange the order of the layers a bit, just like they originally were. Back to my sample, you can see that the guy is handling the fishing rod. The rod looks like some fish took the bit, that's why it's swinging like this. Go back to the main character, select the fishing pole, display its content like this. Here we have two groups and two paths, and I will keyframe them all. For the pole, it's quite simple. We only need to keyframe them to move them gently. You can watch more references on the web to better understand our motions. Here I will move this keyframe to the side. Up and down, like this. Remember to synchronize them a bit. Move it to the side like this. Let's see how it moves. It only needs to move gently like this. And at about two and a half seconds, we start to transition. Therefore, you don't need to do a lengthy motion. However, I still drag it to this side a bit. I select all the keyframes. This time I hold control and click on these keyframes to turn them into circles. When you have circular keys like these, your motion will have a certain degree of smoothness. Like I said, the fishing pole will be parented to the hand. I will parent it. At the parent field, you can see the spiral whip. You can click it and drag it to the hand. When you move the hand, the rod will also move along. For example, I position it a bit to this side. Move it down a bit like this. And there we move it inside. Move it up. I will also select it. And can click control on the keyframe to turn them into circles. Then we have a motion like this. You just test until you have a desired result. The freedom is all yours to control your motion. Next, I will make the head fall down. Here, I will teach you a bit about one animation principle. Back to our sample, you notice that when the head falls down, the character's head knocks down a bit and then rises up. And while falling, I will also make the head uh, indent a bit. This is a small application of the squash and stretch principle as well as secondary action. 
in order to make your animation more dynamic. Go back to our main character, I will press P and press R on the keyboard. Here I will also drag the keyframe back about half a second like this. It will fall quickly. I select the head outlines, move it up, also rotate it a bit. You see the head falling like that. The head currently falls a little slowly, so I readjust its timing, make it move faster. So when the head falls, the character's head should also bow down a bit. Since the head's motion is not too complicated, and the head doesn't rotate too much when bowing down, so I will parent the head to the head with the head outlines, I will press R, then press Y to switch to the anchor point tool so that you can move its anchor point below. It should be around here like this. I will click rotation, go back about two frames, and move the head lower like this, about five degree. And then I will let the head return to the previous position. Copy its first keyframe and pass it to this position. Basically, you have a motion like this. The head will bow down first and then turn up. It's a bit too fast now. We have to easy ease later. Go to the head. Previously, I have said that when the head makes contact with the head, it will be compressed a bit. So I display its property, displaying the path. I'll click on the stopwatch, press U to minimize, go back to about 2 frames, and I'll select these points. I'll move them down a bit like this. After the contact, it will return to its original state. When we are done, I'll select all the keyframes, choose keyframe assistant, and easy ease. Let's see. Much better. At the same time, our boat will sway a bit. I create a null and move it to the bottom. I will parent everything to this null. You can see that there are some layers that haven't been parented. While layer 5 and 6 has been parented to the hand and the head already, so we don't have to select those. We only have to select those that are set to none in the parent field. Select them and parent to the mono null. I display position of this now. I move it a bit to the left and right. Only a bit as the boat has no engine and isn't traveling. Right click and I will also hold control to create circular keys like these. We see that the motion is still fast. So you can still adjust. Back to the main comp. After doing all these steps, we turn back on all the clouds, the sun and the waves. Let's see how they move. Okay, this tutorial has run for one hour, so I pause here. Next tutorial, I will share with you about the remaining parts, which is transitioning from the boat to the car and also animating the dog. Best of luck to you!